News Alert. A big meeting right now happening inside the White House. President Trump is hosting a bipartisan group of lawmakers. They are talking about immigration policy. The White House has a long wish list of reforms and border security measures that it wants in the deal. Democrats want to make sure the so-called dreamers are protected from deportation. And the standoff may make a whole host of other pressing problems a lot more complicated to work out. This is Outnumbered. I'm Harris Faulkner. Here today, Sandra Smith, anchor of the Intelligence Report on Fox Business, bringing intelligence, Trish Regan. That never gets old. Former Deputy Spokesperson for the State Department, Marie Harf. Joining us on the couch today, Brian Kilmeade, co-host of Fox & Friends, host of the nationally syndicated Brian Kilmeade show on Fox News Radio, and author of Andrew Jackson and the Miracle on New Orleans, the Battle that Shaped America's Destiny. Stay still. I have another two or three sentences to read. <laughs> no, throughout Outnumbered, welcome. Oh, I thought we were going to go to animation. <laughs> I felt welcome. like there should be an animation of you and you guys walking across the street or something. Right, right. right. You're like breaking a story this or on it. the phone. This is the show. Okay, I mean, I, turn, da, right. da, da, da. But I put it this way: when they, when they put my name on the calendar for today, I was hoping there'd be news breaking, wouldn't be running a repeat. But my goodness, <laughs> there is so much going on, including what is taking place in Washington. We're yeah. happy to have you. Yep, inside you sure? the White House. Right <laughs> you see, I saw like there a little bit a of a pause. Yeah, I was a little worried about that. <laughs> All right, welcome. Thanks. Let's get to the news. President Trump is hosting a bipartisan group of lawmakers inside the White House right now. Republicans, Democrats coming together to talk about immigration policy. The White House wants a border wall and changes to the visa lottery and chain migration programs. Democrats want protection from deportation for hundreds of thousands of immigrants brought to the United States as children. Chief White House correspondent John Roberts is live at the White House now. John? Harris, good afternoon to you. In any second now, we should hear from the president and some of the members inside that room where they are meeting on immigration. The pool went in about 25 minutes ago and they're still not out. So I would imagine that the president is probably waxing on about his plans for immigration. You can see that a group of 20 bicameral bipartisan members of Congress, that means Republicans and Democrats from the House and the Senate, uh, are here meeting with the president. Interesting to note that not among the group are Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi. Uh, Mitch McConnell or Paul Ryan for that matter, but some of the notables that are in this meeting, the House Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy, the Whips John Cornyn, Dick Durbin, Steny Hoyer, Judiciary Committee Chairs and Co-Chairs Chuck Grassley, Diane Feinstein and Bob Goodlatte, Mike McCall and Benny Thompson, who are the Chair and Ranking on the Homeland Security Committee in the House, and Lindsey Graham, Heidi Heitkamp and Henry Cuellar. The President says that he is willing to cut a deal on the Dreamers, but he wants some things in return for giving them protections. The uh, White House is going to deliver a series of proposals, uh, not necessarily demands, but just points that the president wants to get across here in this meeting as to what he wants. That includes movement on the wall. The president, of course, wants construction of a wall. Uh, what to do about detainees, ending immigration loopholes, ending chain migration, and the number of new ICE agents that the president wants to put on duty to enforce our customs and immigration laws. The White House legislative director Mark Short a short while ago on Fox Business said uh, construction of a wall for Democrats based on their legislative history should be a no-brainer. Listen here. It's also something that 54 Senate Democrats voted for $40 billion in border security, including physical barriers in 2013. It's the 2006 Secure Fence Act that Chuck Schumer voted for. They've already voted to do these things. They're trying to politicize it now because Donald Trump is president, mm. but it's what's needed for the security of our country. And again, interesting to note that neither Chuck Schumer nor Nancy Pelosi are at that meeting. The White House says they wanted to put together a group of lawmakers who want to get a deal done on this and not necessarily play politics. They've still got two months to get this done, but Harris, the legislative ca uh, calendar, as you know, moves quickly. A lot of this talk about the Dreamers is also tied up in budget negotiations, so they really have to get moving on this if they want to get something done by the 5th of March. All right, John Roberts, thank you for teeing up the facts for us. We'll bring it out to the couch now. So, Brian, you just heard that Schumer and Pelosi are not there. The White House wanted less politics and to get something done. But you have quite a few Democrats at that table. I think it's great. Uh, because if you, are you really away from leadership, though? Or did they tell you what to think? And my sense was that Lindsey Graham said when we were in the thick of the tax debate, 
debate, the final lap on the on the on the tax reform the president passed. He said behind the scenes, Dick Durbin, Lindsey Graham were heading up a rotating number of bipartisan people to meet on immigration. And he said they were making great progress on it. Yeah. So as we start making some progress there, I wonder, did you take that progress to 2018? And if you took that progress to 2018, are you legitimately going to negotiate or you've been told by leadership we're way ahead in the polls, we're close to taking back at least one chamber, and the last thing we want to do is give any sense that President Trump can negotiate. And by the way, all of those dreamers are caught in the middle of this conversation. Right, Marie? Well, and the Democrats have put multiple ideas on the table, as have some Republicans, to protect the dreamers and to get a deal done here. I think the odds are probably mixed at best, if I had to uh, put a, put a uh, thought out there about where I see this going. But the real sticking point is going to be what some say could be $18 billion, some portion of that funding for a border wall that we were promised Mexico would pay for, not U.S. taxpayers. So I think you can get a deal on everything else. It's it's how far President Trump and the White House want to push the border wall piece of this that will determine whether we can get a deal, I think. Don't you have to be more realistic, though, and, and, and ask, and I'll ask you, mm -hmm. do Democrats really want to get a deal done? Yes. If it protects dreamers, absolutely. Yes. Really? Because yes. they're so absolutely. angry at your party right now. And Nancy Pelosi. Well, I think they're most angry at Donald Trump, to be very clear. They weren't bum-rushing his lecture. Well, b believe me, I think they're much more angry at Donald Trump for putting them into this position that they're in today. And we can talk about the history there as well. But I think that Democrats absolutely want a deal if it will protect the dreamers. Right. But there are some red lines here they don't want to cross. Yeah, we got that. So, Trish, yeah. uh, this, this talk about who started where, yeah, this wasn't on President Trump's watch when this was put into place for this, this program. Yeah, no, I think that both parties have always shown a commitment to wanting to get immigration reform done. It's simply the right thing to do. Um, and, and it's taken on, frankly, some kind of life of its own, this whole idea of, you know, now we need to open keep our borders open no we've never wanted to keep our borders open and that's never been a principle uh that this country is about despite the revisionist version of history that you hear over and over and over again this country has not always been as welcoming as everybody would like to and you make look back it even seem. as recent as president obama and, and president clinton talked tough on border security it just makes you wonder if Democrats are sort of singing a different tune. Oh, it's just at the Rio Grande sector, and they pointed to areas in which you're not allowed to build a fence. It's right. uh, environment uh, doesn't allow it. So we know there's not going to be a wall from sea to shining sea. And there are areas in which the president can show compromise and Democrats can show victory by saying, look, the president is not going to get his complete wall. He's going to get some fence. But there are areas in which those prototypes that are in San Diego will right. clearly work. Yeah. So a couple of things on that. Um, and, and, you know, the clock began ticking on dreamers under President Obama's watch. I just want to put that out there. And, and I don't know where you were going with that, but, but that is a fact. Well, but the legal case had not been resolved yet when President Trump made this decision. It was still going through the courts. The Supreme Court had not ruled on dreamers yet. So President Trump made a decision before the legal case had played out. Senator Roy Blunt of Missouri told me last week that he agrees with the president in terms of finding a way to protect mm -hmm. the dreamers. If we're Republicans can come forth with a deal and Democrats are not at the table. I have said it before. It will be politically punishing for them because there are some things that Republicans are willing to do now, like protecting a That's nuclear the family. That's the leverage that they have, where they have not been there, at least on paper and at least so publicly before. Yeah, absolutely not. And that's just thing. If Upon further review, it looks like the pressure's on Republicans, majorities in, in both areas, and a president in the White House. However, if you see that what happened to Senator Schumer when they stormed his office, if you see what happened to Nancy Pelosi when she tried to make a speech, if you see the pressure they're feeling from Hispanic groups that we talked to this morning on Fox and Friends, you see the fact that they don't have all the power. They can't play wait and see. I mean, in real time, we're getting some of the play out from the president speaking at this bipartisan meeting happening right now uh, we are learning he just said we have something in common we'd like mm -hmm. to see this get done he said I really do believe Democrat and Republican the people sitting in this room really want to get something done I hope we're going to come up with an answer for DACA says the president a few so, moments ago Trish neither party can afford to let the government shut down right now because we, we talk all about the, the politics and the optics of shutdown and nobody can afford that right now no, Americans don't like it because it once again symbolizes their frustration mm -hmm. with Washington, which is that you know, Washington can't do a darn thing. Right. Um, and if they actually shut down, the, the anger, frankly, may be more directed at Republicans because they're seen as in control. But on either side, it is completely a loss. There's no win there. Mm -hmm. uh, economically speaking, 
we can handle it. We actually can. And what you typically see is a rebound uh, in the economy uh, shortly thereafter. After the shutdown, we've been through it before. No big deal. Um, but I think it, it, it doesn't sit well with the American people because they think you guys are so darn messed up that we have to shut our government down. But you, that's, and that's the problem, the Trish. If, if this president gets something done and it's the first compromise since the Clinton years, perhaps, or right. since No Child Left Behind with Bush, it makes President Trump look good. And that's, right. the, that's what Democrats fear. Yeah. We don't even matter in this. The, the voter doesn't even matter. It's about them getting political well, see, gain. I, I, well, I, I agree with you on that. And I am less optimistic that something can happen because I think the Democrats really and truly will come back to that very issue. And they do not want to see right. the president succeed on anything. So specific to what they have to get done by next Friday, January 19th, they kicked the can down the road over Christmas, which is why it felt like it was just yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, it hasn't been that long. Um, Chip. The children's health care program is a huge one, benefiting 9 million children. Congress extended it by $2.85 billion, and apparently it wasn't enough to get it through March. That's right. So where are we on that? We'll see. I mean, these are the things that I think Democrats actually would work with Republicans on. I don't think that it's all a zero-sum game. Believe me, there's always politics, but Democrats want CHIP funded. They want the Dreamers to be able to stay. And yeah, but both parties want that, though. But Otherwise, then why hasn't they wouldn't it have extended done yet? it. But they extended it. But see, this right. is, this is, but they haven't done it permanently, and some states are in danger of running out of funding. Some, they're starting well, to Well, they tell say they are, and that they will freeze their, their program. Exactly, and that's not something we should, I think, probably try and test, because we don't want these children to lose their so health So I want to get this in here too because Dick Durbin, D Durbin Democrat from Illinois, mm -hmm. who's been very outspoken on the issue, uh, he is sitting with the president in that meeting right now and, and, and he said Democrats will find support on some elements of border security, yep. um, noting that as of March 5th, a thousand people a day will lose their DACA status. He said lives are hanging in the balance. We've got the time to do it, he said. So it seems like some optimism, at least, is that fair to say, coming out of this meeting with the president? Yes, and I think Democrats, honestly, I think they will get there. If the, if the, if the deal is, is the right one, I think they will. Uh, all right, so on the wall, I don't know if you guys caught up, but the New York Times was reporting this morning that in order to pay for this border wall, they may have to do some things like ease up or uh, completely take out or delay border surveillance money, radar testing, uh, not testing, but technology, uh, more border agents, patrol boats, those things that work. Why would that be the case? Brian? I'm not really sure because they need 1.8 billion to finish the Rio Grande sector, uh, which they think is the, uh, the most uh, telling port, part of it. So 1.8 billion would be enough to get something done. The president's going to go in a couple of weeks and see the prototype he wants to put there. That's because there's no additional funding. We don't have money for it, this is We just don't have money for it. We do have money for it. Sure. Isn't all this, the more you put on the table these I, I types of the things, is. it is a it negotiating is. point. I, I right? know exactly where this money is. And, and it gets us back to something that's really wonky and we don't really have time for. But they did not close the carried interest private equity loophole. So you have a lot of fat cat billionaires that are basically not paying income taxes on their income. They are treating their actual income as investment. That could get you $180 billion and you could buy 10 fences right you. there. We are having a fire drill, but we are not <laughs> expected to get up. So you're about to hear the announcement get louder than my voice. Well, if there is a fire drill, the word is the guy has to go as a representative outnumbered. <laughs> so do I have to represent the no. whole team? Let's okay. just lower our voices and listen and make sure they're not calling us by name. But Okay. All right. In the subway. Okay. Smoke in the, so subway. Got smoke in the subway. I don't know. I want to tell our viewers what's going on because this is important. We have a concourse level that sits beneath us that connects to a lot of avenues here uh, across Rockefeller Center. And so this is one of those announcements that they make, and you happen to be able to hear it in one of our live <laughs> If I could studios. get back to the news for a second, uh, the president says that GOP rep Bob Goodlatte will be introducing a bill in the coming days. And the president said it should be, Brian Kilmeade, a bill of... Red carpet care means we bring our A game every time and work a little harder so your family feels more comfortable and makes you feel like a star. Even when we think no one is watching because you'd never know when that red carpet care could make someone's day. You really do get more with Gilmore. Fox News alert, North and South Korea holding their first high level talks in more than two years. And that is breaking news. And you're looking at a live look at the White House right now because we know that there is a major important meeting happening in the, in the White House right now. Bipartisan talks going on with the president, Republicans, Democrats. They're all coming to the table to talk immigration reform. 
sorry, I was supposed to talk about that, not about North Korea. Um, but that is happening right now, Brian Kilmeade. And this yeah. is an incredibly important day because this is setting up to be the legislative priority of 2018. But at the same time, they've got to come together and decide how to fund the government by January 19th. Do you think it's significant? And maybe I'm overthinking this, but the president evidently in the pool report is in between Steny Hoyer and Dick Durbin. While he's talking about something bipartisan, do you think it's symbolism instead of sitting there with Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell mm -hmm. saying these guys don't know what they're talking about? Him saying, I want to get something done and having a Democrat. Well, between them? when you look at the list of people who are on here. Yeah. I mean, you've got somebody like us, Lindsey Graham, who just came out and, and said more glowing things about the president yesterday and defending him with, you know, all oh, yeah. that's gone on recently with the book. And so it's interesting because he's gotten these are handpicked players almost in terms of people who say they can work with each other. By the way, the room ought to be so crowded they couldn't find chairs. Right. Right. But it's not. And so far, what we've heard is, is a president very optimistic that a deal will get done. A bill of love is expected. In well, you don't have to stay right. in a room. Hammer it out. Right. Yeah. Because the president can just I think he can order in lunch. All they right. will deliver. Mm. Here is a Fox News <laughs> alert. North and South Korea holding their first high level talks, as we mentioned, in more than two years. And now we're hearing that North Korea will send a delegation to next month's Winter Olympics in the South. This is opening the door to talks aimed at reducing tensions. But so far, North Korea is reportedly not talking about its nuclear program. This weekend at Camp David, President Trump said his efforts led to the new talks. And there are reports the White House is not turning down the heat. According to The Wall Street Journal, U.S. officials are debating a possible limited military strike against North Korea. It would come in response to a nuclear or missile test. It's reportedly called a, quote, bloody nose strategy, demonstrating potential consequences, hopefully without igniting all out war. What do you make of these developments? Is, is, this, is this a sign of progress, the talks between the North and the South? Sure. My fear is that they're going to loosen up the sanctions and they're going to give them the economic aid that the president's worked very hard to begin to choke the regime out. So this liberal leader who didn't want to have an affinity to the U.S. was looking to go to China, but was so threatened by the North Korea, they agreed to the THAAD missile system instead of an environmental study. My fear is they're going to say, get this sense of euphoria, and they're going to say, let's just throw them the, the economic needs to move this forward, which means... Uh, Kim Jong-un will achieve his goal because you know, I don't think he sincerely wants the Olympics to be successful. Normally, I would, uh, you know, see the evidence of that based on the history that we've seen. But the one thing that seems to be different now, you know, you had the CIA director, Mike Pompeo, saying potentially how close they are to, to being nuclear uh, weapons viable. It isn't about what they would do, because normally I would agree. I, I think that you could kind of right. talk them out of aiming anything in our way, hopefully. But I don't, it's hard to talk somebody out of selling them. But, Marie, this is a huge change is to different. see yeah. these talks happening between mm -hmm. the North and the South. And the president, Camp David, over the weekend, he took credit for that happening. Watch. Now they're talking Olympics. It's a start. It's a big start. If I weren't involved, they wouldn't be talking about Olympics right now. He knows I'm not messing around. I'm not messing around. Not even a little bit. Not even 1%. If something can happen and something can come out of those talks, that would be a great thing for all of humanity. That would be a great thing for the world. All of humanity, the president says. Right. Well, not everything's about the U.S. I know we think it is, but it's actually interesting because the North Koreans only agreed to these talks after their successful ICBM test that they had recently. So a lot of experts look at this and say the North Koreans actually feel like they're in a position of strength, not a position of weakness, that that's really why they said, OK, we had a successful test and we'll come to the table. But the president is right that if these talks led to something that de-escalated the possibility of military conflict, that would be a good thing for the Obviously world. Obviously the hope, yeah. That's the hope, and he, and he is right about that. We need to give them a chance to well, succeed. The danger is that they're buying themselves a little time continuing their work on the nuclear program. I mean, I, I've said all along that there's a lot more we can do and there's a lot more we should do in the way of economic sanctions, mm -hmm. and not so much directed at North Korea, because obviously we're not doing anything with them anyway, right. trade-wise, but at China, because China, you, you saw the video that came out a couple weeks ago, mm -hmm. they're still trading with North Korea. They we caught Russia, that, too. Yes, Russia as well. well. And these are the countries that signed on and promised oil. that they were not, exactly they were not going to do that well they're doing it anyway so we need mm -hmm. to be way tougher with china 
And that means uh, taking some, some pain economically uh, on be, behalf of American corporations that we're going to say, you know, we're, we're not going to do all these trade deals with you, China, unless you start to exert your power in a more meaningful way with North Korea. Yes. The funny thing is, they're like, let's let them in the Olympics. The little problem with letting them in the Olympics, they didn't qualify. They have, a, they have one pair of, of uh, skaters, skaters that qualify, but yeah. they missed the deadline to confirm that they're going to appear. So I'm all for waving that deadline. But you see Senator Lindsey Graham? He had a Twitter yeah. response. He said, oh, by the way, don't let them in or we shouldn't go. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a little bit of a problem. You can't just let people compete in the Olympics because you don't want them to bomb you. That's well, not the point. I'm kind of okay with that, actually. Uh, well, I'm, not, I'm sort I'm of not. okay But again, that. you know, I mean, the more immediacy, guys like, uh, you know, our, our generals, I won't say guys like, but General Keene has recently said this. It's, it's less about what they may take aim on and more about what they may try to sell on, on a market like Iran, mm -hmm. uh, places where there's cash out there some of it pallets of cash that have come from us and being used for other things. Um, and, and that's the real problem. It's the relationships that North Korea has with other people. You point to China. That's a great example of where we can exert pressure. Sure. I mean, we've sanctioned one Chinese bank. There's a whole bunch. We can bank China right down here. We yeah, walk by it every day. Right yeah. You know, <laughs> if they are doing any business, and I guarantee you, a lot of these banks are money laundering on behalf of the corporations in China that are still doing business with North Korea. We need our Treasury Department to get aggressive and follow the he money trail. He says he's trail. ready to. Mnuchin yes, says he knows he how. Has. He's waiting for the go sign. Well, and when you know what? The, the president has signaled over and over again that we can give the go sign. And so it's not just military military action we're talking about, but real economic damage. So we, we have to find out who China. has a sign. Well, the president. <laughs> I know. The no, president it, does. Yeah. The president. I mean, President Trump, I mean, he, he understands the financial world very well. He could yeah. give that sign and they could really put more pressure on China and they haven't yet. Okay. I think we'll leave it there. We've Same. got more to get to. Could these two FBI officials that you've heard so much about be responsible for improper agency leaks to the press? Newly revealed text messages are reportedly prompting Congress to look into just that. Plus, President Trump's lawyers preparing for a possible request from special counsel Robert Mueller to interview Trump himself as part of its Russia investigation. So good. Get the recipes at walnuts.org. I needed legal advice for my shop. That's when I remembered that my ex-ex-ex boyfriend actually went to law school. So I called him. He didn't call me back. If your ex 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 boyfriend isn't a lawyer, call LegalZoom and we'll connect you with an attorney. LegalZoom, where life meets legal. Continu continuing fallout over special counsel Robert Mueller's Russia probe. DOJ official Bruce Orr, who was demoted late last year for concealing his meetings with the men behind that anti Trump dossier, has been stripped of yet another high ranking title. This coming amid reports that new text messages have come to light, prompting congressional probes into whether FBI agent Peter Strzok and bureau lawyer Lisa Page are responsible for leaking details of the Russia investigation to the press. Catherine Herridge is live in Washington with all the breaking details. Catherine, good afternoon. Well, thanks, Sandra. Justice Department <coughs> and the FBI must provide the remaining 9,000 text messages by Thursday to House investigators. Meantime, Fox News has independently confirmed some of the text messages this suggests contact between members of the senior FBI leadership, the media, about the Russia case. Eight days before the presidential election, FBI lawyer Lisa Page texts FBI agent Peter Strzok about a Washington Post report complaining the information was too detailed. Page writes, sorry, Rybicki, that's James Rybicki, former Director Comey's chief of staff, called. Timeline article in the Post is super specific and not good. Doesn't make sense because I didn't have specific information to give. Chairman of the House Government Oversight Committee told Fox last night that one of their lines of questioning will focus on senior FBI personnel and who actually was authorized to talk to the media. We have serious concerns about people with the Bureau talking to various media outlets that weren't authorized to speak on behalf of the Bureau. So I'd love to tell you I'm surprised that yeah. someone at the FBI may have been leaking. In a separate development, a senior Justice Department official with an apparent conflict over Fusion GPS, the firm behind the Trump dossier, has been demoted for a second time. Bruce Orr is no longer head of the Organized Crime Drug Enforcement Task Force. He was stripped of his role as Associate Deputy Attorney General in December after Fox News reported Orr had meetings unknown to his supervisors with the co-founder of Fusion GPS, former journalist Glenn Simpson there on the left, as well as former British spy Christopher Steele, who compiled the dossier research. Orr's wife, Nellie, is a Russia specialist who also did research for the Trump Project, which was funded by the DNC and 
Clinton campaign. A source close to Orr tells Fox News that he is still at the Justice Department and now working in the Office of International Affairs, which handles extraditions, and he has kept his civil service status and looks forward to testifying later this month before the House committee in a closed-door session. Sandra. Catherine Harridge, as always, thank you for your reporting on this. Uh, you have to go back to some of these text message exchanges mm -hmm. that we continue to learn, Marie, more and more in and, and, and this pretending to stumble upon this Wall Street Journal article that they clearly, according to their text messages, knew about. Article is out, but hidden behind paywall, so can't read it. Wall Street Journal, boy, that was fast. Should I find it, put in quotations, and tell the team? I mean, these are clear indications, aren't they? That, that well, we'll see. Again, I've always said we need to have some answers from them. They should, I don't know if it's going before Congress, I actually think they should just get their story out publicly and answer some of the many questions we have about their behavior and what they did. It will be uncomfortable, I'm sure, but it's better than... How would than, they do that? How would you yeah. like for them to get their story out? Well, because they're publicly. having an affair. Well, I mean, how public fine. do you want yeah. to take this? She came on to me. I'd like to know how well, it I is. I actually don't care about their affair. I think we're making a lot of, we've made, a lot of people have made insinuations or accusations based on text messages, but we don't have the whole story. And so I think they need to answer all of these questions about what these mean, yes. what they were involved in, and it could be totally innocuous when it comes to the investigation, or it could not be. We just don't well, know. One reason we ought to so care about the, the affair is because it was among two agents, and that might be why we even know about this in the first place, because they were texting back and forth. But I would say this about Peter Strzok. How is it uh, that this situation goes on, right? And he doesn't come out in any sort of fashion and maybe through an attorney or I mean, there are ways to get your story out there. Right. But Brian, I see a huge dialogue bubble above your head. Yeah, there was like, there was like <laughs> 20 of them. Number one, uh, I've been schooled in the, on the way the FBI works is a lot of people say when we have these conversations on the couch, whether it's upstairs or down here, they say, well, you're running down the FBI and you're hurting their morale and you're being critical of people who don't get paid a lot of money and do a lot of great work behind the scenes. But I've also been told, keep Washington away from the field offices. Yeah. The field offices are just as angry about what appears to be uh, a bad behavior as we are, should it lead us that direction. We gotta find out more, because that's not what they're doing. They're pursuing investigations, giving information to Washington, and these guys are texting back and forth, trying to maneuver with the media to possibly upend a candidate. That is out of control, and that's gotta be cleaned up no matter who's in office. Well, what do you think they should do, though? Should they do an interview? Should they testify? I mean, I think they actually yes need to yes. defend themselves. Oh. To the press or trying to plan stories. And by the way, let's just point out that they had some precedent, shall we say, for that via their boss, James Comey, who willingly admitted that he was out there leaking you just to the press. just the mic on that whole thing. They <laughs> but, could leak it. But in other words, if they were doing that, and look, we don't know from these text messages, right. but it sure doesn't look good. Right. Uh, it looks as though they knew the article was coming, and then it did come out, and they were texting back and forth, but they need to answer that question. And you know what? If they're leaking to the press, and they're trying to manipulate this information, as you Fish. say, Brian, it's just wrong. It was October. It's before the election. Yep. So they're influencing the election yep. in some way. We, we've got it down this morning to five yet. different well, articles. Marie, in the how else do you interpret bit. those text messages? Wall Street I mean, Journal, boy, that was fast. But guys, like when you're in, I will say when you're in government, reporters come to you and say, here, respond to the story. We have one coming. We knew there were stories coming before they came out. Not that I was trying to influence them, but they would come and say, do you have this a comment? This is a top ranking FBI official working on I, the Robert Mueller I'm just probe, saying, talking there's by a, a text to another there's FBI a very employee. negative way to read these texts and there's an innocuous way and I know they don't look good and it's tempting to go to the darkest corner of the room that's why we need answers from them I'm not defending them I'm just saying we need answers and we can't assume the worst without a little more evidence how about overall anti-trump bias at the FBI should they be doing more to identify if there is further bias within within the agency well Legally, you can have personal political opinions as long as it doesn't impact your work. And I'm sure there are a lot of conservatives that work at the FBI as well. Bias in their work is what we Right. So, so we have to focus on whether that impacts work. And I'm sure they're on the lookout for that today. So, Sandra, you brought up a couple of things because you brought up Bruce Orr as well at the Department of Justice. And we were talking about how he just got a demotion demotion. Um, how is it that, like, the juicier seats are closest to the door? Like, yeah. <laughs> he, um, he lost one job. Yeah. Then he got put in the HR department, which you said he was counting off days, vacation right. days. We 
don't know. But then now he's been put into another position. I don't know. What it, what does it take to get fired? If it, if Where's it, accountability? Right. And I guess they keep pushing him until he's parking lot attendant, but they don't want to let him go. I don't know if he, uh, the reason why he's not uh, totally fired or, or at least put on leave until they can find out what damage he did, meeting with GPS, his wife, right. before this happened. I, I mean, this is devastating. All of this can comes just down add, to just trust of yeah, the American people in these agencies. Yes, and we need that. I would just add that the danger here is that it, it makes us look no better than some banana republic where you can have some kind of coup and from the inside they're ousting a leader. In other words, we have a democracy, one in which the American voter sent someone to the White House. The idea that, you know, behind the scenes they can be conspiring to get him out, mm -hmm. that's troubling. All right. Trumpism without Bannon? President Trump appears ready to move on from Steve Bannon after his former chief strategist trashed the White House in a new tell-all. You protect your assets. Call now for your free gold kit, free silver kit, and free IRA kit. And for a limited time only, pay zero IRA account fees in the first year. Call 800-630-8900. 800-630-8900. 800 800-630-8900. Okay, so here is what we have been waiting for. We know that the president has been meeting with a bipartisan group of senators inside the White House. And the big talk is the sticking point as they try to keep the government from shutting down. It's immigration. Uh, it's things like the Dreamers program. It's also the wall. And those are the deal breakers on either side of the political wall, uh, if you want to describe it that way, where they are now. They've got to get in that room and they've got to work something out. Now, we have been reporting to you during this hour. Sandra's been reading it off her phone as the details are coming from senators inside that meeting saying how things are going, that things are going well, and that they're looking optimistic. Look, next Friday, January 19th, the government potentially could shut down if they don't reach some kind of a deal. Democrats have said you've got to, to deal with not deporting the dreamers from this country and find a deal on that. The president has said, I want the wall. I promised America that. Make America great again in those areas where you can build it. I want to see that. Uh, you're talking about billions of dollars uh, for the wall, and you're talking about a, a change in immigration policy for the Dreamers program. So what will it take to bring everybody together? Notable absences today, kind of those big names of leadership in the party, like a Nancy Pelosi or a Chuck Schumer. These are the deal makers as the president sees them on both sides of the political aisle. Uh, and and he wanted them specifically in the room among the Democrats, Bob Menendez of New Jersey, Heidi Heidkamp of North Dakota, and Dianne Feinstein of California. We're about to go now for the first time to see what they have been talking about inside the cabinet meeting room inside the White House right now with the president and the bipartisan group of senators. No, I think it's changed. I think my positions are going to be what the people in this room come up with. I am very much reliant on the people in this room. I know most of the people on both sides. I have a lot of respect for the people on both sides. And my what I approve is going to be very much reliant on what the people in this room come to me with. I have great confidence in the people. If they come to me with things that I'm not in love with, I'm going to do it because I respect them. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, can, can you beat Oprah, by the way? Yeah, I'll beat Oprah. Oprah would be a lot of fun. I know her very well. You know, I did one of her last shows. She had Donald Trump, this is before politics, her last week. And she had Donald Trump and my family. It was very nice. No, I like Oprah. I don't think she's going to run. Thanks, she's gonna be the Thanks, I don't think she's going to run. Thanks, I know her very well. Thank you, Mr. President. The, uh, Thank Mr. You. President. Thank you. Let's wait about that for the press to meet. Yeah, it's phase two. I think comprehensive will be phase two. I, I think I really agree with Dick. I think we get the one thing done, and then we go into comprehensive the following day. Mr. President. I think it'll happen. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Yes. Well, wait, we'll, we'll, we'll Let's start. wait one second. Let Thank you all very much. Thank you, sir. I hope we gave you enough material. This should cover you for about two weeks. <laughs> so the press gets enough material to cover us for about two weeks, he says. He did uh, do a lot of spit and rhymes there, we might say. Um, we got a lot of information out of that, and I haven't seen Brian Kilmeade ever lean that far forward. Right. He said, I have great confidence in, quote, what people in this room come up with, even if I don't agree with it. 
I'm going to go with it because I have confidence in them. And you said, what? That can't possibly be the case. I think he said, but oh, so what he said. The no, that's was, what he said. What, what he said, I can't, I can't actually, I know he said that, but I can't actually <laughs> believe that he would say, okay, no wall, no problem. You know he's yeah. going to say, well, I need $1.8 billion to get it started yeah. before we get to comprehensive. So Trish had the line of the day. What is it? Well, just I, I think he, he wants to get something done for the Dreamers. I think he really does. He I mean, we, 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 yeah, and I think that he is he's going to do it. He wants Hold to do it. Hold on a second. Yeah, and it like, may, I don't know. I mean, the, the wall is a really big deal, a big deal for the base. But Steve Bannon's out of the picture now, right? I, it, it's quite possible that he will want this enough. that he. And wouldn't that be amazing? Do to see a Republican and of all people, Donald Trump be the one to offer on, what about the some last kind of pack for the Dreamers? Can you beat Oprah? He was asked. Yeah, he yeah. Said, yeah, I like her. Yeah, I did yeah. My, show. <laughs> I like did her. my whole family. Yeah, he said I, I, I was one of the last people on her traditional show, Oprah, before she yes. went to own. But, right? I can't even I can't even think about that kind of campaign, Oprah versus Donald Trump. Why? Why? Thing, I just I can't get my head around that. Too much fun for you as a Democrat. That, does that sound like a good idea? That's, that's one word for it. It's fun. Um, I don't. I don't think. Oh, oh, I don't oh, that think, was some shame. I don't think. Oh, not towards you. I don't think Oprah's going to run, but I do think she has a fundraising and organizing power in the Democratic Party that if she puts towards other candidates, she can be very powerful. Who do you think she likes? I, I, honestly, I don't know. I mean, because Donald know. Trump liked her. I mean, maybe they liked each other at one point. As, I, don't know, as man. I mean, he was asked about her years ago. There's no question there's no President Obama without Oprah. However, she disappeared in the last six years of his administration. From politics. In, in politics. I just didn't see her anymore. I don't know what happened between them, but they clearly weren't as close. Well, Did it have to be something between them? No. I mean, if you, if you look at kind of, it cost her with her audience in many cases because people didn't want to watch politics. From so you think she might have backed out? Well, yeah, maybe. Going back to the immigration discussion, what's